Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 5 of the chapter Chemical Kinetics. In this video, I am going to tell you about the order of a reaction. In the previous video, I talked about the rate law and I told you that the expression, the rate equation or the expression for rate of a reaction is the rate of a reaction is equal to the rate constant K into A and B, the concentrations of A and B, where A and B are the reactants, raised to certain powers and these powers are uh, how sensitive the reaction is to that particular um, reactant. These powers may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficient. They only depend on how uh, much the reaction depends on that particular, the, the change in concentration of that particular reactant. I'll just give you an example. There's a reaction that is taking place in, uh, in a dilute solution and in an extremely dilute solution. Imagine the presence of water is necessary for this reaction to take place. But if you increase or decrease a little amount of water, it is not going to affect the rate of the reaction. So in this case, the value of X for water would be zero. It means that this reaction, the rate of this reaction does not depend on the concentration of water because the very initial con uh, condition was that the reaction should be in dilute, uh, should be in a very dilute solution. So you get me? The rate is equal to rate constant into A and B which are reactants raised to certain powers on which depends the rate of the reaction, certain powers of the concentrations of the reactants. So X and Y indicate how sensitive the rate is to the change in concentration of the reactants A and B. And the sum of these powers is known as the order of a reaction. So in the rate law or in the rate equation, whatever powers the, the concentrations of the reactants have been raised to, the sum of those powers is the order of a reaction. That is defined as the order of a reaction. So therefore, the sum of the powers of the concentrations of reactants in the rate equation is called the order of the reaction. Now, a reaction may be a zero order reaction, it may be a first order reaction, second order reaction or a third order reaction. Usually, reactions do not exist beyond a third order. That is, you cannot have reactions that, have, that are beyond third order, at least they have not been seen. And if you, if uh, you take a chemical equation and it appears to have more than three reactants and you get a feeling that uh, this reaction appears to be of a higher order. Actually, that reaction may not have taken place in one step. It must have taken place in multiple steps or in two steps and each step would not be beyond a third order reaction. The reason for it can be understood for any reaction to take place. The reactant molecules have to collide with each other. And since they have to collide with each other at one time and they have to collide simultaneously for that change to occur and not only do they have to collide simultaneously they have to collide in a certain direction for the reaction for the uh, chemical reaction to be effective uh, or for it to take place that is if there is one end that is reactive and the other end is non-reactive. For example, in a soap molecule, you see the head is polar and the tail is non-polar. So if the reaction has to take place with the head, that is with the polar end, and it is the tail which comes and collides with the other molecule, the reaction would not take place. It is only when the polar head hits that other reactant would the reaction take place. So, imagine a situation in which you have one molecule, just one molecule which is responsible, that's a first order reaction. For a two, second order reaction, there are two different molecules which need to collide together, still possible. But for a third order reaction, it is a little more difficult because now you need three different molecules which are going to collide simultaneously and that too in certain directions. And not only directions, each molecule should have a certain amount of energy also, a basic threshold of energy for the reaction to take place. So there are many factors which decide whether a reaction would take place between molecules or not. And beyond a third order, it is not possible for molecules to simultaneously uh, fulfill so many requirements. Therefore, 
the order of a reaction is usually zero order, first order, second order and third order reactions. If you say a reaction is a zero order reaction, it means that reaction is independent of concentrations. If the power is zero, it means it depends on the concentration of A to the power of zero, it means it's, uh, it does not depend on the concentration. So we say if it is a, if any reaction on the whole is a zero order reaction, it is independent of concentration. So having understood this, if we are required to calculate the order of a reaction and the rate law or the rate equation is given to us, it's very simple. All you have to do is add up the powers and you will know the order of a reaction. So this is example 4.3 of your NCRT textbook. The question is that rate equations are given and you have to calculate the order of these two reactions. So rate is equal to K where A is to the power of half and B is to the power of three and a half, uh, three halves, that is three by two. So let us find out the sum of half plus three by two. So upon two and three plus one is four and four by two is two. So the answer is two. Therefore, the rate of the, sorry, the, um, the order of the first reaction, that is A, reaction A would be two. This reaction is a second order reaction. For the second question, the rate again equation is given K, A is to raise to the power of 3 by 2 and B to the power of minus 1. So let us calculate, add up these 3 by 2 plus minus 1, so minus 1, right? Let us multiply 1 by 2 and divide it by 2. So we get 2 by 2, this becomes 2 by 2 and 3 minus 2 is 1 and 2 remains in the denominator, 2. So you get half. So the order of this reaction is half. The order of a reaction may not always be a whole number. It can be a fractional number too. So this shows that it can be a fraction. So that is how you calculate the order of a reaction. A balanced equation may be a sum of elementary. This is what I explained to you. When you look at an equation, it appears that the order of the reaction is much higher. But if you feel that the order is beyond 3, it definitely means that that reaction is actually an overall reaction. The reaction took place not in one step, it took place in multiple or maybe more than two steps. Two or more than two steps. So a balanced equation may be a sum of elementary reactions which make it a complex reaction. Any reaction which is made up of elementary reactions and in the end you are only giving the overall reaction is a complex reaction. So. A complex reaction is made by the sum of elementary reactions. A balanced equation may be a sum of elementary reactions making it a complex reaction. For example, in the oxidation of ethane to carbon dioxide and water, intermediates are formed and these intermediates are alcohol, aldehyde and acid. These are formed as in different steps. Alcohols, aldehydes and acids are formed before finally giving out carbon dioxide and water. So these are the different steps in which the reaction took place. <coughs> and not only is it that you will have different steps in which reactions will take place. I told you that the angle at which the collision takes place also decides the reaction. Sometimes you may have two heads in the same molecule which are capable of reacting with that other reactant. So if one head reacts, one product is formed and if the other side reacts, another product is formed. So you may have side reactions, you may have reverse reactions taking place and all these make the reactions really complex. Now take an example. You ask some nursery kids to walk in a circle. You make a circle on the playground and you ask the kids to just keep walking in the circle in a line. They are all moving in a line and they are moving in a circle. And they are little kids, really little, who, don't, uh, who, don't, who cannot follow instructions for a long time. So what do we notice? In a little while, one of the kids does not really want to walk in the, uh, in the circle, nor does he want to walk in the line. <coughs> and he moves off in a tangent. On a tangent, he just moves off the circle. And where is he going? You have no idea. He's just moving off the circle because he doesn't want. It is somewhat like that. The molecules, they are supposed to be doing, moving in that circle. In a, that is what you're expecting in a, uh, a, a, for the chemical reaction to take place. That every collision should be perfect. And then the reaction. But sometimes they are like nursery kids. 
It's one of them may just move off the tangent. Some of them, if you're having a fight with someone, you know, one way is to really go head on head, have a collision head on, and you're having a fight. And the damage will be maximum. But there is another way of fighting too. If a head on collision is not possible, and the teacher is in the class, and you're, you were in the middle of a fight, and you're standing next to the kid you are fighting with, a little nudge on the side may also work. It may not be the same product, it may not give the same result, but it'll work. So, when reactions take place, a little side reactions, a little reverse reactions, and moving off to the tangents do take place. So, when you look at these individual steps, or whatever side reaction, each one becomes an elementary reaction. And the sum of these elementary reactions ultimately gives you the final reaction that took place. So we have elementary reactions which make it a complex reaction and reverse and side reactions also take place. For example, when the nitration of phenol is done, you can get two products. Either an ortho substitution takes place, so you will get an ortho nitrophenol or the substitution may be a para substitution. That is instead of one and two carbon, you have one and four carbon of the benzene being substituted. So you'll have the benzene ring. So you'll have para nitrophenol. <coughs> so uh, you will study details of this when you study your organic chemistry. Let us now come to the next subtopic, the units of rate constant. Now look at this rate equation. If you had, we know that rate is equal to rate constant into a to the power x into b to the power y. The units of rate constant depend on the order of a reaction. And how do they depend? Let us understand that. If rate is k, a to the power x, b to the power y, then what will k be? k will be equal to rate upon a to the power x and b to the power y. You understand this? That rate is equal to, uh, k would be equal to rate upon a to the power x into b to the power y. Now, if we take the units, what will be the units of uh, rate? The units of rate is the change. What is rate defined as? Rate is change in concentration upon time taken. So let us say we take the concentration in moles per liter, that is molarity. And time could be in seconds, it could be in minutes, it could be in hours, it could be in days. You choose the time. So the, the units for rate are concentration upon time. The unit for concentration, whatever unit you take, and the unit for time. But the units for this uh, denominator, that is a to the power x and b to the power y, would depend on, the, they are also concentration terms, but they would depend on the power to which it is, it is raised. So for a zero order reaction, the value for any order of reaction, that is x plus y, the, the uh, unit for k will depend on that power or on the order of the reaction. So, for rate, the unit is concentration upon time into 1 upon, let us take x plus y, x plus y, a plus a and b are concentration terms, any concentration in molarity, and x plus y is equal to n, which is the order of the reaction. So, unit will be calculated by concentration upon time into 1 upon concentration to the power of the order of the reaction. And the value of k will depend on this order. How? Let us assume that the reaction is a zero order reaction and we want to calculate the unit for k. The, um, the unit for rate is concentration upon time. Let us say we take concentration in molarity that is moles per liter and time in seconds. So we get concentration upon time is moles per liter upon seconds into the for a zero order reaction, 1 upon concentration, concentration is moles per liter, the unit for concentration is moles per liter, to the power of the order is 0, so to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. You know that mathematically. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So this, this denominator becomes 1. If this is 1, so what does the unit of a zero order uh, rate constant become? It becomes moles per liter upon second because this is 1. So, it becomes moles per liter per second is the unit for a zero order reaction. Then you come to a first order reaction. For a first order reaction, what is the unit now? The unit for a first order reaction, again for concentration, it is moles per liter upon second. 
into 1 upon moles per liter is the concentration unit for the concentration term to the power of 1 because that is the order of the reaction. Anything to the power of 1 is the same thing. So it is moles per liter. So you have moles per liter in the numerator and you have moles per liter in the denominator which get cancelled out. And since they get cancelled out, your unit for a first order reaction becomes S negative. That is second inverse. For a second order reaction, you have moles per liter upon S into 1 upon moles per liter to the power of 2. I hope you are able to understand. This is the concentration term and this is, that is the rate, the, uh, the, the what term, the unit for the rate. And this is 1 upon moles per liter concentration term raised to the power of 2 because it's a second order reaction. Now if it is raised to the power of 2, one of the moles per liter gets cancelled and only one is left. So you'll get all of these in the denominator. You get a mole, mole, inverse, liter is already inverse so when you bring it up it becomes liter and second inverse. So mole, inverse, liter into second inverse. So in a question, if you are given the value of the rate constant, you may be asked that this is the value of the rate constant. Now tell me what is the order of the reaction and nothing else is given to you. All you have to do is look at the units. If you look at the units, you will get an idea what is the order of the reaction. So there is one such problem in the NCRT. Let us do that now. Give me a moment, I will write it down. Alright, so this is the solved example 4.4 of your NCRT textbook. The question is that identify the reaction order of the, from the following rate constants. The rate constants are given to you. Rate constant here is equal to 2.3 into 10 to the power minus 5 liter per mole per second. So liter, moles per liter is the unit for concentration. So if it is in the denominator, it means it's a second order reaction. Moles inverse liter second inverse. Moles, lit inverse, liter, second inverse. So this is a second order reaction. So you are not really concerned with the numerical value. In such a problem, all they expect is for you to conceptually know that if this is the unit, this is going to be the order of the reaction. In the second case, it is 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 inconsequential. The unit you have to focus on, second inverse. If it is second inverse, it means that there was a concentration term in the numerator and a concentration term in the denominator which have been cancelled out. That is possible when the concentration term in the denominator has a value of 1, which means it's a first order reaction. So in a first order reaction, first order, you get the unit second inverse, right? So this was orders, order of reaction. In the next video, I'll tell you about the molecularity of a reaction. So, and with this, I'll wind up the video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.